Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you the style guide we are using at Tambien and we are going to um, share it with you guys. And more specifically, I'm going to show you the column system that we use. And I'm quite excited about that video. So the column system is a concept we took from Bootstrap that allows us to create the grid we are using on Adobe or on Figma in Webflow. And that makes creating complex layouts very easy. So let's go. So I won't spend too much time on the basic styles uh, in the style guide. Um, so we can see that we have a typographic section where you can set up all of your styles, then a color section. Then we have some elements, so buttons, links and forms. And then we have the grid system part. So I'm, I'll come back to that in a few moments. So this is about the grid system as well. And at the bottom of the page, we have some more styles. So we can change the padding large, medium and small. We can change the overflow to auto, hidden or scroll. And then we can show our hide element depending on the view, the breakpoint we are in. And that's pretty much it. The goal with the, the style guide is to have something that we can easily customize depending on the project we are working on. And uh, yeah, the, the, the last thing I'd like to show you is that we have an embed at the top of the page with some styles in it. So the, the code at the top uh, allows us to set up the free responsive on the, the website. And we are actually going to make a video about that and it should be on the channel next week. So if you're curious about free responsive, yeah, we, we will make a, a video about it. And then we have some more styles. So the one we care about are this one actually. And we can see that we are targeting all of our headings and text that are inside the element with the combo class of section and section white. And what we're doing is that we are changing the color to a black color. And that's how we are um, managing our background and font color. We can see that if I add if I add a class of section white to my section element, I'm changing the background color to white color and my font is automatically changing. My font color is automatically changing. So um, yeah, that, that's it for the, the basic styles. And now we can move on to the fun part, to the column system. So to make everything a bit more clear, I created a small page on, on Adobe. And what we will try to do with the column system is to recreate the grid we have right here on Webflow. And to do that, I need a first, the first element I need is a row element. So I need a wrapper. Um, I need a wrapper. That's it. So let, let's go on Webflow and let's see how we can do that. So I'm just going to add a section and a container. You can see that I have some left and right binding on my container, but that's not that important. And the first element we want to create is a row element. So I'm adding a div and I'm adding a class of row. And we can see that we are changing some, some styles. And the first thing we are doing is that we are changing the display to flex. And we are adding some negative margin to the row element and we'll see why in a few moments. So now that I have my row element, I want to create my different columns. And to do that, I need to add another div with the class of call and we don't see it for the moment. So I'm just going to add a placeholder so we can see more clearly our call element. And yeah, so that's our call element and we can see that our call element um, is going to grow if possible and we have a left and right padding. So the first thing I want to set up is the gutter width. And so on Adobe it's 16 pixels. So what I want to do is change the padding on my call element. So I'm using REM as a unit of measure and for me one REM is 16 pixels. So if I want to set up my gutter width, I need to do 16 divided by 16, so one. REM and I also need 
to divide it by two because I have padding on the left and on the right. So my colon is actually not that wide. The width of my colon is going to be like this. So I need to divide it by two and I have 0.5 RE. So now I have one element that's taking the width of 12 columns. So let's see if I duplicate it. Now my element is taking half the space and it's going to, it's going to do that every time I uh, duplicate it. So now I have two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so cool, now I have my 12 columns. So that's nice, but how do I do if I want to create, for example, this layout where I have a two column element and then I have that. So I have an element that's taking the width of two columns and another one that's taking the width of eight. So we are going to take a look in the style guide and we can see that we are we have all of our elements right there so we have the row call and container element and we can see that we have different classes uh, so it's a combo class and we can see that if i add if i add for example the class call lg 11 to my call element now my element is going to take the space of the, the width of 11 so that's how we are going to set up our design so let's go back let's keep only one and let's try so let's say call lg2 and we can see that now my element is taking the width of two columns let's duplicate it and let's say call lg8 okay so now i have my two elements so my left column and my right one but i don't want them to be like this i want them to uh, be like that and for that i can go to my row element and i can add a class of justify and we can see that we have around between center and then start and the one i want is between and we can see that now my layout is as i want it to be and so i can uh, try for example end and I can play around with that and same for the alignment and if you have any doubts you can always go back to the style guide and we have all of the uh, different classes right there so align start center and stretch and the justify one and so yeah that's that easy actually and one of the cool thing about the column system is that we can um, set up the responsive um, during the design process. So let me explain. So let's go back to the justify between. Let's say I want my, my um, column to not be to be wider on tablet than it is on desktop. What I can do is to add another class and it's working just like the call LG um, something class, but now it's call MG and I can add the number I want. And I can say, for example, con, call MG eight. And now we can see that the column are going uh, above one another and it's because the total number of column it's taking is more than 12. So they are automatically getting above one another. So let's change the number for this one and I'm going to say call MG3. And now we can see that my layout is completely different. And to, uh, if, and to show you, we can see that on the style guide, we have the desktop version of one and we also have the tablet one, but on desktop, I don't have any styles applied to it. But if I go on tablet, up now, my um, sizing is changing and that's how i can set up my responsive uh, very easily and let's let's keep going so we have the call lg something for desktop call mg something for um, tablet for landscape it's call um, 
it's SM for small, I believe. Let's try to say four. Yeah, it's working. Uh, call SM, I don't know, six. And uh, same thing for the desktop, call and it's XS this time, and I can say six. And let's not say six because it's already this. Let's say five. And we don't see any change because we're on landscape still, but now it's working. And let's say call XS and say seven. And just like that, I can create layout very easily. And that's pretty much it about the column system. Uh, I did not use that design so much after all. But yeah, I, I hope it's clear. Um, yeah, I really hope it's clear. Um, we are using this um, for every project we're working on now. And I find it super useful. Uh, and it makes creating a website in Webflow so much fun. So I really hope you, you will try that and tell me what you think about it. Um, and yeah, see ya.